Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Science and Technology Committee for the portrait presentation honoring Chairman Bart Gordon. I'm Chuck Atkins, uh, Chairman of the Portrait Committee, and 11 years uh, Bart's Chief of Staff, and I retired happily in January. <laughs> to, uh, I beat Bart out the door, I guess. Uh, in order to open the presentation, I'd like to ask Bart's friend and colleague on the committee and fellow Tennessean, Lincoln Davis, to give the invocation. I want to make a few comments before I do pray. I know that Robert and Margaret Gordon have to be proud of this man who came to Congress in 1984 uh, and has served us exceptionally well. His leadership, his vision, uh, his honesty, his integrity uh, has the same values that we all have in Tennessee. In 1984, I know that God had a plan, and because I was a part of what I thought that plan was going to be, <laughs> but God's plan is always the one that's perfect, and I think the plan that he had for Bart Gordon uh, and his service that he's provided us has certainly proved to be correct. Let's pray, please. Father, thank you for this day and for the many blessings of life that you've given us, the blessings you've given this wonderful nation that we live in. You've blessed us with leaders, one of those being Bart Gordon that we will, that we will miss here and that today we will tell him that we wish you were staying. Father, we ask that you bless him, uh, late, uh, Leslie, his wife, and Peyton as they move into the new life. And I know that, uh, that both will be happy to have him home with them. We will miss him here. Father, again, reach down to this family, touch their heart and, and, and their soul, and that the rest of their life will be one that will be lived as, they, as he has lived for us, service to humanity. We ask, Father, that you bless those who are here today, uh, that you lead us uh, in the direction you would have us to do, and that you would always give us the vision and the wisdom that we need to do what is your will. Our young men and women in harm's way, uh, in the battlefields throughout the world, we ask that you put an umbrella of protection over them and bring them back safely. Forgive us in our many sins. These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lincoln. Uh, Steny Hoyer has been a close friend of Bart since Bart's election to the House in 1984, and I know that Steny wants to share some thoughts with us today on Bart's long service to the people of Tennessee and to the nation, so I'm proud to ask uh, the distinguished majority leader to come to the podium and offer his comments. Thank you. And I know I speak for, our, for Bart, Chuck, in thanking you for your service as well, uh, not only to the committee, to the Congress, uh, to the House of Representatives, but also to Bart personally. I know that uh, his career has been very much a part uh, of your career and yours of his. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, uh, Pastor Davis, I'm pleased to be here with you, sir. <laughs> and the congregation said, Amen. <laughs> we Baptists would stick together, right? I am, uh, I am Bart's friend. I want you to understand that if you're looking for uh, subjectivity uh, here from me, you will not find it. I mean, excuse me, objectivity. Uh, you will not find it. Uh, I very much uh, uh, am subjective when it comes to Bart Gordon. I told Bart when he came in uh, to tell me that he had decided he was going to leave, and we had a conversation there. Bart, I don't want to speak out of school, but uh, we had a conversation that started, uh, we were about 10 or 15 minutes into the conversation, and both of us teared. That is how deeply I will feel the loss of his daily presence in the Congress of the United States. That's the bad news. The good news is uh, Bart will remain one of my dearest friends until the day uh, that I die. He will outlive me. He's much younger than I am. <laughs> He will remain my friend until that time. Uh, he has been one of my closest friends in the Congress of the United States. Uh, Bart Gordon is a politician. Uh, that is a word that uh, I respect. Uh, Bart Gordon was the chairman of his party in Tennessee. Uh, Bart Gordon came to the Congress, as you've heard, uh, in 1985, I guess, January of 85. Is that right, Bart? Uh, we are in a time in public life when civility is in short supply, where showing respect for one another 
is in too short supply. Uh, where anger and impetuousness and incivility reign too often. If that is the case, I know of no example of the opposite of that better than my friend Bart Gordon. Bart Gordon comports himself at all times, uh, deserving of respect and showing respect in return for all of those with whom he deals, whether they be uh, his colleagues in the Congress and they're Democrats, or his colleagues in the Congress who are Republicans. Now, Ralph Hall, who has been both, and is my dear friend, <laughs> can attest to that. The fact of the matter is, uh, there aren't enough Bart Gordons in public service in America. Bart Gordon brings to uh, the consideration of public policy an intellect and an interest, an inquisitiveness, and a desire to make the lives of those whom he affects better. The life of our country richer in every way, not just monetarily, but from a value sense, from a quality sense. Uh, that is the kind of representative Bart Gordon has been. Uh, I have the privilege of uh, having all the chairs of the committees meet with me every Wednesday morning at 8.30. Um, Bart is almost always the first one there and always brings to the discussion uh, a very reasoned, measured, insightful advice and counsel to all of us that sit around that table. And every chair, when Bart speaks, shows great respect for what he has to say. Bart Gordon is a treasure. Bart Gordon uh, also has extraordinary good judgment. My good friend John Tanner came to me in the cloakroom. We were eating lunch. He came over to me and he said, Bart, you know, he's getting married. And I said, yes, I, I know that. Uh, to a beautiful, wonderful, very successful, very talented woman, Leslie, who is here with us. Uh, and John Tanner said, Al Gore is going to have a little reception. Would you like to contribute to that? I thought a little reception that I would contribute to might be 100 or $200. I said, of course. Well, it turned out to be a very nice reception. <laughs> Ann Free is laughing. Jim Free is back there chuckling. We were there together. Uh, but it was not 100 or 200 dollars, and it was a wonderful reception. I'm glad I had the opportunity to participate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I went a little bit into my savings, and I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Peyton, your mom and dad are wonderful, and you are one lucky little girl. I have three daughters, Peyton. Uh, they are now uh, much, 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 much older than you are. But I remember them when you, they were your age. Uh, your dad remembers them when they're a little older than you. But I have also three grandchildren and a great-granddaughter. Now, my granddaughter, one of them's 23, one of them's uh, 13, my grandson, and one of them's eight. So you're closer to the eight-year-old than you are to the others. Uh, but you are a treasure. And your father has all that he needs. He's leaving the Congress, uh, but he will keep you forever and your mom forever. What a treasure that is, Peyton, uh, for him, uh, for you, and for your mom. You're a lucky young woman to have a father who is so loving, so caring, so respected, so liked. We're pleased that you shared him with us. We know that he lamented that sometimes he missed some of the things you were doing. It was our fault, not your dad's, believe me. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to unveil a portrait. 
A portrait is a representation. Uh, it's uh, some wood around a, f a frame, that, around a canvas uh, with some oil, or I presume it's oil uh, <laughs> painting. I haven't seen it. And I'm sure that it will be, uh, the artist here, if I don't, where's the artist? I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful portrait. But as we look at these portraits, uh, we do not uh, have it conveyed to us the essence of the character, of the soul, of the conscience, of the intellect. That's what Bart Gordon is an example of. He is one of the best of us who have served in the Congress of the United States. He is one of the best of us who calls himself American. God has truly blessed this Congress and this country with Bart Gordon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Denny. Uh, it's extremely difficult for any committee chairman to be truly effective unless there's a good partner on the other side of the aisle. And the Science and Technology Committee has been very lucky to have just such a partner in Ralph Hall. Bart and Ralph have not only effectively led their respective sides of the aisle, but they've demonstrated a mutual respect and a genuine friendship that served as an example for all of us in this committee, both members and staff. So I'd like to, it's a pleasure to ask Ranking Member Hall to come offer his remarks. Chuck, I thank you, I think. I'm not sure. But I was a Democrat once and I switched. And I can't tell you when you ought to switch, but I can tell you how you ought to switch. You ought to tell your wife first. I, I hadn't made up my mind, but I sent two requests to be on a ticket to Austin and the fee for two for a Democrat or Republican. Didn't know for sure what I was going to do, but I was praying about it. And just at the very last, I decided, go ahead and switch. I'll be a Republican. When I got home, my wife had her lip out and her hand on her hip. She said, okay, buddy, explain this to me. I said, what, baby? She said, what, baby? Nothing. I heard over the television you'd switch parties. Bart, don't do that, let me tell you. <laughs> it wasn't any fun eating out and sleeping by myself for about three months. But, <laughs> but uh, I, I just, and I, I'm down here by mistake because I didn't know it was going to unveil. I thought they said they were going to hang. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, Bart and I have worked together and worked together very well. Uh, in Congress on both the Energy and Commerce Committee. We had the same committees always in the Science Committee since his election in 1984. And it's been an honor to serve with him. And uh, uh, when I was a fellow Democrat and now as a Republican, but we didn't always agree on specific policies, but we always shared a love of the institution and the issues that we helped shepherd through Congress. He's just a wonderful guy and is chairman of the Science and Technology Committee. Bart's really raised the bar, and I, I've, I've worked with other chairmen. Uh, I worked with uh, Sherry Bolick for a long time, and as you know, Sherry was a Republican, but he was pretty liberal, and I was a Democrat, but I was pretty conservative. And the book on us was that I kept Sherry from spending all the government's money on trying to save the whales, and he kept me from drilling on cemetery lots. <laughs> Bart, that hadn't done me that way. As chairman of our committee, uh, he's raised the bar. He's really served as chair. He's held an astonishing 235 hearings, 24 subcommittee markups, and 28 full committee markups. And he's raised the profile of the committee and sure made sure that our members were not ignored, ignored in wilder uh, or policy debates, no matter how tough they got whatever Sensenbrenner said or did while well, he put up with it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, a gentleman from California, uh, he called him his, uh, what was it he called you? 
comrade. But, uh, <laughs> but he brought a host of influential people to come before the, the, tick, the party, too, and before our committee. Neil Armstrong, John Glenn, uh, Microsoft founder and philanthropist Bill Gates. And I, I was with Bill Gates about 15 years ago on something. It's just all I could do not to ask him for just for $300 or anything. <laughs> And I did, I told him that, and he said, I haven't had that little money in my pocket since I was 12. <laughs> but but uh, we, Norm Augustine was there just today, uh, honored Bart with his presence here, and what a great guy he is. Uh, uh, talking about America's competitiveness, and former Vice President Al Gore to talk about what else, climate change. And uh, I sat right between Al Gore and little Barry Goldwater, uh, for I think about three sessions when I was a Democrat, and both of them class guys, wonderful guys. But when Al came before our committee to talk about all those outrageous things that he talks about, <laughs> and and I love Al Gore. I, I was with him when his little boy was hurt. Prayed together that he'd be delivered, and and served with him. He's an honorable man, an honorable family, a good wife, clean family. And when he came before us, I said, Al. And when it came my time, Joe Barton had just taken him over the coals pretty bad. I said, Al, I just can't hardly help but ask you, how did you ever get so goofy as you are? <laughs> he said, I knew you were going to say that. But uh, uh, we differ, and uh, we differ there as we debate. But we're together when, one, when we're losing him, we love him more. Uh, when we're working together, we respect him more. And I just think he brought a host of influential people before our committee, and uh, uh, we've had some very healthy debates in the committee and on the House floor and passed a lot of good pieces of legislation. Uh, some of them languished at the bottomless pit known as the Senate. And Sam Rayburn, my predecessor, uh, had a young Democrat come in to him and said, Mr. Speaker, I want to be a speaker's man. You tell me which one of those Democrats you want me to work on. I'll just leave his chimney standing. Mr. Raven said, son, son, wait just a minute. The Democrat on the floor of Congress is not the enemy of the Republican. The Republican is not the enemy of the Democrat. The enemy is the Senate. And I think we've all pretty well learned that. But he's been a tireless and good advocate of advancing our nation's competitiveness. And I just uh, know that you're going to join me in wishing Bart the very best of luck in his career at retiring from Congress, and I'm sure he's going to continue to work to make our nation the best that it can be. To his beautiful wife and lovely little daughter, I say, good luck. Enjoy, Bart. He's a decent guy. He's a fine guy. He's capable of friendship. And I uh, would say to his wife that when he retires, I've always heard, you get twice the husband and half the income. So God bless you, and I hope things go well. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. Uh, the U.S. Capitol Historical Society and the Office of uh, House Office of History and Preservation serve a vital purpose in forever reminding us about the U.S. Capitol, its institutions, and the people who serve there. And I want to thank them for their assistance in putting, uh, making this event possible and their stewardship of continuing to preserve our history. Ron Saracen, president of the Society, is here with us today, former member of the House from Connecticut. I'd like to thank him. And uh, Farrah Elliott, the House curator, is also here. I want to thank her for her guidance during this process. And I would be remiss if I did not draw your attention to the special thanks page on your program and to the donors, my appreciation for your generous and enthusiastic response to my request for your assistance. We appreciate it. Portrait artist Paul Benny cannot be with us today, but through his artistry, we're able to add yet another chapter to the history of the House and to this committee. Bart Gordon is the most focused, dedicated and hardworking elected official that I've known during my career in public service. It was his boyhood dream to serve here, and his boyhood dream was realized through 26 years of remarkable service to this House and to this committee. So it's fitting that he become a part of the history of this institution and of this committee by unveiling and presenting his portrait which will hang and be displayed in this committee room along with the other distinguished former chairman. So I'd like to ask Bart's mother, Margaret, his wife, Leslie, 
and their daughter Peyton to come forward to unveil the portrait. We have three generations of Gordons here, Gordons here which is, uh, makes this special event, I think, all the more remarkable and all the more special. Um, in a moment, the distinguished speaker of the house is going to come to accept this portrait. What, but what I'd like to do right now is have the portrait unveiled. When she arrives, we'll present it. She'll accept it and then hopefully have some remarks for us. So I would simply ask Peyton to do the honors and unveil the portrait. Who picked the tie? <laughs> it's, it's remarkable. It's beautiful. Just, just Why don't we just make, uh, by unanimous consent, the speaker's going to come here and say very nice, nice things, and we'll all just know that so that we won't have to hold you up uh, during that period of time, because we do have votes going on. But let me just, is it okay? Uh, <laughs> let me just welcome everyone, and thank you for being here. It demonstrates what free food and drink will do for a crowd, and we're, I'm glad you're here. You know, it is nice to be able to uh, hear your eulogy while you're still alive, so um, I hope that you all have that, that chance. Uh, this, I'm sure, oh, well, uh, may I introduce uh, uh, the uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much. I don't know who's in charge here, but we had a bill that was coming to an end on the floor. We never can control it, can we, Steny? No matter what. And so I had to be the... They won't close it down. Thank you, Mr. Leader. As Speaker of the House, I am proud to accept this portrait on behalf of the House of Representatives. It will be on display as a reminder of the great leadership integrity and commitment Chairman Bart Gorman, Gordon demonstrated during his 26 years here. I want to acknowledge three generations of Gordon women, his mother Margaret, I'm sure they've been acknowledged, but I want to join, or less his wife Leslie, and his daughter Peyton, whom we've seen grow up here in Congress. And we are grateful for the, to them for sharing Bart with us. When Bart became chairman in 2007, he committed that the Science Committee would be the home, as he termed it, of good ideas and consensus. There are many opportunities for members of Congress to disagree. The Science Committee has become an opportunity for agreement. It is a remarkable accomplishment that during Bart's chairmanship, every single one of the 146 bills and resolutions that have come out of the committee have been bipartisan. Bart has committed his chairmanship to keeping America competitive. He was first in sounding the alarm of the need to invest in science and math and, uh, education and scientific research because Bart Gordon knows that innovation begins in the classroom. Many of you know that Bart is very proud of his uh, authorization of the Competes Act and the reauthorization of the Competes Act. And the Competes Act contains much of our innovation agenda. But let's take it back a few steps when Bart was call, uh, calling for hearings and the rest on rising up against the gathering storm. And that, the, uh, that rising storm, is that the correct name? And with that sounding of the alarm that he did in Congress, bringing in experts, bringing in authorities, uh, making it unavoidable that we would have to act upon uh, the, that warning. So he, again, uh, as a leader, he saw early that's what a leader does. He saw early 
what the challenge was, and he had positive initiatives. He was particularly a visionary in the need to invest in high-risk, high-reward science through ARPA-E, helping ensure America's energy independence. Under, leadership, under his leadership, that in May, this, the House passed the American Peace Reauthorization Bill, as I mentioned, which keeps our nation on a path to double science over 10 years. This is quite remarkable. The scientific breakthroughs, innovation, and even cures that will happen as a result will be a tribute to Bart's leadership long after he has left Congress. Every time I come to this room, I'm always drawn, as I'm sure most of us are, uh, Tennyson is one of my favorite poets, so I love that he's on the wall here. For I dipped into the future far as human eyes could see, saw the vision of the world and all the wonder that would be. At the time of the Romantic poets, the poets were trying to talk about science, and the scientist wanted to be poetic. It was a very interesting time. I, I uh, I uh, refer you to the book uh, Age of Wonder that talks about the romantic poets uh, and science and how they came together. And this quote is one example of that. But isn't that what Bart did? Dipped into the future as far as human eyes could see, the vision of the world and all the wonder that would be. Thank you for opening that all up to us, Chairman Bart Gordon. Thank you. We say that our colleagues are the gentlemen from a certain state. Bart Gordon is truly the gentleman from Tennessee. And that was my opportunity to introduce the gentleman from Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> and so I will yield back the floor to him and be proud to accept this wonderful, wonderful portrait on behalf of the House of Representatives. I hate to correct a speaker, but if, if, as I recall, you were the one that set up the innovation uh, <laughs> agenda, the first caucus, even before um, you were sworn in. Uh, you said this was our future, and you brought us together. I'm glad that I could try to carry out part of that blueprint. Um, and thank you for accepting uh, this uh, a portrait. When I look at it, I, I'm reminded, and this really did happen, when I was in school, I ran for student body president. and. Um, uh, you know, I was getting a little brochure together, and I had a friend that was taking a, 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 a photography class at that time. And so she said, well, I'll take a picture of you. And she said, you know, good. So she took a photograph, showed it to me. You know, I didn't like it. So she took another photograph. Well, I didn't like that one either. And so finally, she said, well, if you take a picture of a tree, you get a tree. And I'm afraid <laughs> that, uh, I'm afraid that a portrait is the uh, same thing. Uh, now, we hear the bells go off, so let me try to try to be uh, be, be quick. Uh, uh, you know, I, I've had the good fortune over these um, 26 years to serve with six speakers, and they all had different assets uh, and strengths. You know, you don't get to be elected speaker if you don't have something going for you, and so uh, they all they all did. But uh, you know, no one has put the full package together like Nancy Pelosi. Her, her, her passion, her persuasiveness, Lord knows her patience, uh, is really amazing. And what, what you'll find when you're in a meeting with her, and oftentimes we're, we're in really been quite a few, and, and there'll be this issue and that issue, and, and you know, it's just like boom, boom. And she has such a grasp of, of all the issues that it, it really is what puts it together. And so, Speaker Pelosi, you are an amazing lady. Um, and... Let me, you know, even before, I guess, I realized all that, uh, Peyton did. And I remember at the swearing in <coughs> that <coughs> um, she kept saying, uh, <coughs> excuse me, MSP, MSP. And I didn't know what, you know, she was doing, MSP. And so I finally asked her, and she said, Speaker, Madam Speaker Pelosi, Madam Speaker Pelosi. <laughs> so not only have you have been a great leader, but you have been a role model for so, so many, many people. Uh, I'm glad that um, you introduced the three women in my life. Uh, just, just to clarify once again, my mother is, is Margaret Barton Gordon, my wife is Leslie Peyton Gordon, and uh, our daughter is uh, Peyton Margaret Gordon. So we don't have much imagination when it comes <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, to names. Uh, 
Chuck, uh, Emily Baltry, and, and the always loyal Leanne Brown, thank you for putting together, getting all this together. Uh, I, I say to just to say you know much about Chuck, but I, but to be brief, uh, if it hadn't been for your leadership, and really you know we would not have been able to get the science committee up and going as quickly as we did. You you know uh, uh, switched the or, or or hit the whip and people got going uh, a little faster than they wanted to, but that's why we were so productive. So thank you for that. And and Lincoln, uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, there are lots of Tennesseans here today, and uh, John, can, and, and we all know that in about 30 years, we want to come and see uh, Lincoln uh, get his portrait as chairman of the Appropriations Committee. <laughs> so we'll be waiting for that. <laughs> it was 26 uh, years ago, and like many of, of my fellow members here, uh, I wound up at the top. How many of y'all were in the top of, of Longworth the first time? Cliff, were you up there? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we, most of us, that's where we started, up in the top of Longworth. Well, it just happened there's one very nice suite up there. And, um, and I was next to it. I wasn't in it. I was next to it. And there was a uh, uh, young man from Maryland uh, who occupied that suite named Stenny Hoyer. Uh, and he has been a, a friend and a mentor ever since. I think that on a bipartisan basis that everyone would agree that really uh, Stenny is the institutional conscience of the Congress. Uh, he really is a man of the house. And thank you, uh, Stenny, for all your, your support. I would like to talk a lot more about Stenny, but I'm going to give myself the advice that I normally give him. Be shorter. Don't talk so, so much. <laughs> so I'm just going to say I'm grateful for your friendship, and I'm glad that... <clears throat> uh, Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm glad that I had a chance to know Judy and the girls, <laughs> as well as Charlotte. <laughs> um, and Ralph Hall, thank you. You know, I, I guess, I, I don't guess, I know I owe a real debt of gratitude to Ralph because if he had not defected to the dark side, <laughs> <laughs> I would never have the opportunity to, to be uh, chairman. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> thank you, Ralph. <laughs> I'm not sure that they opened the right uh, uh, envelope there at the election commission, but I'm glad they got the one they did. Uh, you have been a great partner uh, working with our members and staff. We don't agree all the time, uh, but there's respect that allows us to work through problems, and that's, as the speaker said, we've been able to produce 149 bills and resolutions, all which have been bipartisan, uh, and uh, I think the reason for that is that we've tried to put country above party, and I know that's what Ms. Hall would have wanted. Um, and to the 45 members of the Science and Technology Committee, uh, I want to thank you uh, for working as a team. Um, you know, uh, you, there, there's a trust that builds over a while, but I have to just put it in perspective. Uh, Dana Robacher and Lynn Woolsey are both from California but they're from different planets. <laughs> I mean, uh, but somehow, you know, somehow uh, the trust is developed and uh, everyone has been able to uh, work together and be productive. And to the other uh, members here, uh, you know, there'll always be a bond, we know that. Uh, when you stay up late at night, casting votes and walking back and forth, you know, criticizing the silly votes that we're having to take there, you know, there's, there's a bond that comes about that we'll always have. And, and I haven't been in the gym in about three years, so I hope I'm going to be able to maybe join you back there. Um, and to the non-Hill friends that are here today, I, I want to thank all of you for your advice and friendship. You know, we're in such a pressure cooker here that it really is good to be able to talk to somebody that's, a, that's you know, a step back and can give us a little bit of, of, of good advice, and, uh, and I would say to my members, uh, you really need to know some folks on the other side, too. It helps you to get a better grounding, um, and I think that will also be beneficial. And so finally, I want to especially thank um, those people, <coughs> excuse me, that we all know that run this place, and that's the staff. Um, uh, we couldn't do without you. Uh, my district staff, many of them have been with me for over 26 years. Uh, they have to answer all of the complaints that we 
gin up uh, uh, down here. Uh, they have been great. The, I want to thank the congressional office here in Washington. They keep the, the trains uh, running, and uh, they answer some very ugly mail, and so I thank them for that. Uh, and also all the, uh, the alumni uh, staff that are here uh, today. Uh, the Science Committee staff uh, have been in overdrive the entire time. Uh, we've had 233 hearings, innumerable uh, roundtables, discussions, things of that nature. And because of their hard work is the reason that we've been able to come forth with those 149 uh, bills. And also want to thank uh, the other staff, those folks in the cloakroom, uh, the people on other committees, uh, that you never, you know, they're always there to help you or to give you some, some bit of advice. And they are an institutional uh, memory that is here when we come and go. And so we should all be grateful uh, for them. So let me very quickly tell you my story. And uh, Chuck alluded to it. Uh, but <clears throat> when I was 18 years old, um, Jim Free asked me to volunteer for the uh, congressional uh, uh, race of a mutual friend of ours. And so I helped in that race. And that's when I decided that, <clears throat> that public service is what I really wanted to do with my life. And that, um, excuse me, <clears throat> that a, uh, being a member of Congress really was the highest office that someone like me, um, you know, not a wealthy family, not a big name family, but somebody that was willing to work could do. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I spent the next 17 years, literally, uh, campaigning. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Fortunately, in 1984, Al Gore decided to run for the uh, Senate, uh, which gave me the opportunity to succeed him there. Well, so you could expect I was pretty happy when I got here. Um, but I, sh I soon realized that if you're not chairman of, of a subcommittee or a full committee, it really is hard to have the impact that you want to have. So 22 years later, uh, uh, Finally, I was able to become uh, a chairman. And so now, when I look back at those 43 years, uh, it was all worth it. And, <clears throat> me, <clears throat> and particularly the last four years, uh, uh, really, they've been intense, but they have been the best of those 43. And, and so just in conclusion, let me say that working together with the Science Technology Committee uh, members and the staff, I think that we really have uh, passed and implemented some very important legislation that has made America more competitive uh, in really this new world economy, uh, which is something that we have to keep in mind. And so I hope that because of our work uh, that, that our daughter and your kids and grandkids are going to be able to really have the platform now uh, to be able to compete and live the American dream that all of us had that good opportunity to. So thank you all for being here. Yeah. 
Let me remind everyone, um, as Lewis has reminded me, uh, we have a bill on the floor right now, the rare earth minerals that I have to go vote on. But we have a lot of food, a lot of, uh, hey Julie, a lot of, of, of drink and the whole works down in the other um, uh, committee room. And so uh, I'm going to go vote and some of the other members go vote and then we'll come back and hope to see you then. Thank you.